Hello, BBTC. I am sure in the light of the COVID environment, we are all keeping our spiritual discipline of reading the Word of God, of praying, and of worshipping. And to come to realise that worshipping God and walking with God does not require us to be in a physical structure like the church proper. I would like to share with you something from my experience while keeping my spiritual discipline at home. I come to realize that it was very natural, it is very natural for us to be praying for ourselves under these present circumstances, to pray for our families, our friends, our church, our oikos. And it is well and good. We could be praying Psalms 91, the Psalms of protection and safety. We could be praying Deuteronomy 8.18, especially when some of us are going through difficult times financially. We could be praying general prayer of protection, numbers, the Aaronic prayers, so on and so forth. But I've come to realize that perhaps our focus in prayer should take on a different dimension. What good it is, is it for us to pray for our own safety in the homes against COVID-19 when, when we walk out of the house, we are faced with dangers in the natural environment, in the community. What else? What good is it for us to be safe at home when there are dangers, for example, while we are queuing up for our groceries, when we are sitting in the MRT? So it dawned upon me that our focus of attention should not be too inward, but to take on a bigger dimension. Over the weeks, I have been humbled by the scriptural text that relates to praying for the nation. My first reference here is a scriptural text from Ezekiel 22.30. In Ezekiel 22.30, God told Ezekiel that he was looking for someone to rebuild the wall, to stand in the gap and pray for the land so that he would not have to destroy it. In the second scriptural text that I was looking at and I was impressed upon is 2 Chronicles 7.14. We know this text talks about God telling his people who are called by his name that if they were humble, if they humble themselves, pray and seek his face and turn from the wicked ways, then God will heal the land. And then I was impressed by the third scriptural text that comes from Jeremiah 29.7. And in Jeremiah 29.7, the context was this, that the people of Jerusalem and Judah were being sent captive to Babylon. And God told them to pray for the welfare of the nation. And he says that in the welfare of the nation, you will find your welfare. Some version says, pray for the peace of Babylon, so that in its peace, you will find its peace. Now, the first two scriptural texts has to do with the sins of the land. And today, I'm not focusing on the sins of the land or the sins of the people proper, but just to give us that perspective that God desires us to pray for the land or to pray for the nation. But it is in this third scriptural text of Jeremiah 29, 7 that I pondered and I reflected and I asked God why. Why is it that if your people were to go into a captivity in a land that is very hostile, why would you want them to pray for the nation? Why would they have to pray for Babylon? And it dawned upon me that God has lessened for the people of Israel at that time, for Judah, for Jerusalem. And the lesson is this, that while being taken to Babylon, a nation that is very vile, a nation that is very vicious, a nation that is very idolatrous, they worship this god Maduk, which comes in 50 different names. They also are living in a nation, Babylon, that is very cruel, very oppressive. And I was asking God, why would you ask your people to pray for a nation like this? 
Some scholars have said that they were told to pray because they had to settle in 70 years of captivity. They had to make themselves comfortable. They had to come to the fact that they are going to be there for a long time. But I believe God has a lesson for the people of Judah and Jerusalem in their captivity. And this lesson is that they have the power to change the environment in which they are in. Follow me for a while. Given that the, Israel, the Israelites were to be in this land, they would enter into the land as captive. The land is oppressive. They are coming in as captives. We know that Babylonians are very cruel. That they, when they were capturing the land, they exercised all forms of cruelty. They put people to the sword, young, old, children, pregnant women and all that. And in this hostility that they are going to meet and in this oppression that they're going to have in Babylon, things are only going to get better for them if the environment changes. And God is telling them that you can change the environment. If the environment changes, it will be well for you. And so as the Israelite entered into Babylon, this instruction from God, he said, you pray for the welfare. And obviously, if I were an Israelite in the land of Babylon, I will pray for the oppression to be removed. I will pray for gentleness among the captives by the Babylonians. I will pray for the well-being of each one of us as we realize there. And this is a lesson I've learned, that truly God wants us to pray for the nation. And he tells us we have power to change what is in the nation so that when the nation improves, we will be the beneficiary. So in the light of COVID-19 and all that is happening in us, I think it is a season for us to remember this, that while it is good for us to pray and focus on our families, on ourselves, on our friends, I think priority must be given to praying for the nation. For if the nation is well, then we are assured each and every one of us will be well, that we will be safe. So in this particular season, I'd like to encourage each and every one of us to pray for our government, to pray for our Prime Minister, because he needs wisdom to steady each and every one of us, to keep our hearts in check. We need to pray for our defense minister, our, our finance minister, because he has to know how to deliver and how to give us supplementary budgets. And he has to ensure that what is given out to the nation goes to the right place and goes to the people who really are in need of it. We need to pray for the coordinating co-ministers who are overseeing the task force. We need to pray for Gan Kim Yong. We need for, to pray for Mr. Lawrence Wong because they have to be bold to understand what is happening, the new developments and how COVID is taking a new direction and be bold enough to exercise and implement what is necessary. So my encouragement for all of us in this COVID-19 situation is to remember God desires us to pray for the nation. That in the welfare of the nation, we find our own welfare. In the peace of the nation, we find our peace. We find our own peace. So be blessed as you pray for the nation. Be blessed and be encouraged that the well-being of Singapore affects you and you have the power to change the well-being. For COVID-19 to be lifted, for us to return to our normal lives and for us to be well settled in once again to routine. Thank you all. God bless.